Hi, it's V with Crafting Daily Dose, and today I have another alternative for the January 2023 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Key to My Heart. Now this kit represents the custom of using padlocks to symbolize everlasting love. People place a lock on fences or bridges and then throw away the key. It's really romantic, but a lot of places don't allow you to do this anymore doesn't matter because you can still do it on a card. I've used lots of pieces from the kit and I brought in one of my favorite dies. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to create this look. So here are the pieces for our project. Let's start with the ones that come from the kit first. So we're going to be cutting down one of the envelopes together. I've got two of the lock die cuts. Any two of them would work. I also have one of the key die cuts and about eight inches of the Calypso coral twine to make a little bow. Now, this is what I'm adding extra. This is a card base made out of basic white thick cardstock. It's in landscape orientation, so it's five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, scored down the middle at four and a quarter inches. And then here I have another panel of basic white thick cardstock. It is five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. And obviously I've cut it out using a die. It's this one from the Split Card Textures die set. Now this is a standalone set, so that means that it doesn't coordinate with any particular stamps, but I really love this one and it's very versatile. This doesn't quite give us the look of a chain link fence, but there's lots of spaces here that we can work with to make it resemble a metal fence that somebody would want to put a padlock on. I'll be stamping with the Fresh Freesia ink that comes with the kit. And then I'll stamp this sentiment in Memento Tuxedo Black ink just to help it stand out a little bit more. The supplies are all set and we're ready to get started. Let's begin by trimming out the envelope. Now I usually start by cutting off the sides here. So I'm going to turn it this way just so that I have the flat edge along the top. And I'm going to make just a really narrow cut. When I'm making a narrow cut, I like to start in the middle because if you start on the end and you try to push up, you're gonna meet a lot of resistance and that's when you tend to get some tearing. So just pushing down. And then from the other side, again, I'm lining this up so that I get a really narrow cut. Pushing down the blade into the paper somewhere in the middle and then going up and down from there. So we were able to cut off really thin pieces. And then we can open up the envelope. Now sometimes with the printed envelopes, we get the pattern through the whole thing. This time we only have it through this back section here. So I'm gonna concentrate on this piece and I wanna cut out a piece that's going to be big enough for the background layer of my card. I'm trimming it down so that the final size is just a little bit smaller than the card front. It's going to be five and three eighths of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch. So first, cutting off this white section. Then I'm going to turn it and put it so that I'm cutting at four and one eighth of an inch. So in the final card, that's going to represent the height. And now I want my width to be at five and three eighths of an inch. And now this is ready to use. I've got my silicone craft sheet underneath and I'm ready to do some stamping, starting with the card base itself. So I'm stamping on the inside of the card base. I'm gonna stamp in this corner here. This is that lock image and I'm stamping with fresh freesia. And then I'll come back and add the key as well. Now on this panel, I'm going to be using the heart stamp to fill in the space here. 
Now I'll be stamping with fresh freesia ink, but I want to make sure that it's light. So I'll be doing second generation stamping, which is just a way to say that I'm stamping off onto some scrap paper first and then using whatever ink is left over on the stamp to stamp on my main project. And this is just a piece of that envelope that I cut off that I'm not going to be using for anything else. I'll start at the bottom so I can control how much white space there is and then I'll work my way up from there. I've got a sticky note here to protect the white grid at the top in the parts that are still going to be seen. Now we can start to assemble. I'm going to put the two locks on something like this. I rearrange them so that it looks like that they are interlocked with one another. I'm going to glue this bottom one on first and using my fingers here as a reference, I only need glue on this little corner here. And then before I glue this one down, I'm going to go ahead and cut it right here. That way I have a chance to take it and put it around. So that it goes through those spaces right there. And I'll just flip this up so that I can put some glue back here. And if I want to, I can flip this over and glue some scraps right behind here so that there's a little bit more stability since so much of this is over that mesh part that I can't really glue down. So these are just the leftover pieces, that negative space that came out from the locks. I'll show you, they came out like this. And I'm just gonna use them as scraps and glue right over these sections here just to help give a little bit more stability to where those locks are. And since I'm already looking at the back side of this, I can go ahead and put some dimensional foam stickers. Now, for these thin sections, you can easily cut your dimensionals up. So what you can do is just use snips to cut a strip from the dimensionals. So they cut really easily. You can just go like this, cut it from the edge, and you'll be able to use this in the thin sections just like that. Or I'm going to be using the dimensional foam strips which are already pre-cut so it just makes things a little bit easier and neater. They are the same thickness as dimensional so you can use them interchangeably in your projects. Now you can glue this straight down but having the foam gives it some nice lift and creates interesting shadows for your project.
Now I'll add the piece of envelope to my card base and I always like to flip it open just to make sure that it isn't upside down before I start. For this, I'm using stamp and Seal. Now I'll peel off the backing on the foam and place that panel down. When I can remember to do it, I try to leave some of the backing still on so that it's easier to make corrections and adjustments if I need to. Next, I'll glue down the key And finally, I'll make a little bow with the twine and use a glue dot to put it on. There's our finished card. On the inside, we got to stamp with some of the additional images from the stamp set. And then on the front, we've got plenty of dimension, texture, and some shine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity. If you get a chance to try out the project, I would love to see it. So share it in my Facebook group or tag me if you're sharing elsewhere. If you're interested in Paper Pumpkin but don't yet have a demonstrator, you can find my subscription link as well as all of my other links in the description box below. I hope to craft with you again next time and until then, have a great day!